coming off last week's game, what, what have you worked on and what's been the focus in practice this week? Just tried to focus on ourselves and what we need, need to do to prepare for North Texas. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we've been a team all year long that has had a good response when we've had a, a negative result. Mm -hmm. um, and in that game in particular, we played so well for, for so many moments of it. Um, it was really just a short amount of time where we lost the momentum, where we didn't have the impetus uh, to be the, the more aggressive team, to be the team that was on the front foot. Mm -hmm. And that hurt us. So if we can learn from that, focus on ourselves a little more, um, we have another team like Houston that desperately needs this game. Mm -hmm. So it's we go back to the same state. We have we go in search of a, a different result for sure. Hopefully a similar type performance and just the result being different. Uh, Klaus and Leuven out again. Uh, yeah, Klaus is still um, out. Uh, Leuven is getting better. We'll have, just have to see. Mm -hmm. With, Cla with Klaus out and uh, with Klaus out and um, Dolling uh, suspended, what are the options you are using at number nine? Are you doing something different this week? Yeah, we have uh, you know we have Dita Armstrong, um, Caden Glover. Uh, we pulled up from the academy. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. uh, and then you know we can always play with false nines. Uh, you know, just think of Paris Saint Germain or Bayern Munich right now. They seem to be doing that pretty well. Uh, and that's a different look too. So we just got to make a tactical choice that we feel will give us the best chance to be successful in the game. Putting an academy guy in that kind of spot, that's a, I guess that would be a big vote of confidence for you and that. It is, and that's what you have to do with player development, though. You know, you can't develop players without giving them opportunities like this. And we tell them the whole time, you got to be ready for when this exact moment happens, you know? There's a lot of reasons. Sometimes it's planned. Sometimes, like this, injury, red card, you're the next guy up. Uh, so it's nice to have some depth in our academy with some quality you know, young guys mm -hmm. that, that can fill that void. And at this point in the season, with the playoffs so close, the championship, you know, possibly do you think less about development at a time like this? Yeah, I mean, I've said it. It's a nauseum. Mm -hmm. Like we have different objectives than just mm -hmm. winning a championship, um, and we feel confident that we can uh, be successful with whoever we put on the field because mm -hmm. we trust our process. We trust the way that we train. Um, we know that the academy coaches are doing a great job. So you don't get some of those reinforced ideas unless you take some action in moments just like this. Mm -hmm. So. I would just tell you we don't forget about that. We try to make sure we're hitting all of those different objectives. Mm -hmm. Celia Pompeo, what is it in a game like this, or just you know, he seems to have brought an awful lot. What, what have you? Did you scout him? What was his? Uh, name name? Yeah, um, Celio mm -hmm. uh, is a guy that we saw playing at VCU. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was a college coach a long time ago. Mm -hmm. um, still have some pretty good relations and. and uh, head coach there and the assistant coach had given me a heads up that this might be a kid that you want to put on your radar and um, looked at him a lot and you know feel really fortunate now that he's here uh, because I think you've seen him grow as the mm -hmm. years gone on and um, you know I think the future is bright for him because he has shown that he is willing to grow and willing to take a setback and then come back stronger and, uh, mm -hmm. That's the kind of resiliency we want to see, and, and he has a lot of tools. And mm -hmm. if he continues to go up and up, um, there's a good chance for, for Celia to have, you know, a great career and long, long success. And hopefully, that's here in St. Louis. What do you think is the best spot for him? I mean, he's so good one v one. We like to get him isolated in spots. So we, in particular, really like him in one of those wide ten rolls for us. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think you are one in three when Max Schneider is not in the lineup. Um, is that Max's case for MVP of, uh, of this team? <laughs> I have Tom, you, you dig up some shit that I never even think about. <laughs> so, uh, no, I would say absolutely no, but uh, it just shows you how important Max is. Um, mm -hmm. And it makes me feel good that I'm thinking about playing Max on Saturday, Sunday. So.
Um, that's nice. Yeah. So he's in the lineup on the... I don't want to tell all the secrets, but yeah, there's a good chance that Max will be in the starting lineup. Mm -hmm. How will the guys like him and Celio, who have been in this kind of auditioning for next year's team, how have they handled that this season of being there? Because this for them has been like a year-long audition. Yeah, it's something we started talking about early in preseason. What a wonderful opportunity. The reality is that we've got guys like Max and Celio here because of that. Mm -hmm. um, and they could play their way into uh, these situations. In particular with both of those guys, you know, they, if they would have got drafted, then maybe they have to go into a preseason without a contract. And then maybe they don't have a true opportunity. Mm -hmm. They chose, you know, with a good sales job by Lutz, mm -hmm. you know, to come here uh, and take that uh, leap of faith with us. They were both players that we looked at and scouted in college. And then I think you see that they've enjoyed their time here and they have grown and developed and given themselves a really good chance to be representing the first team in 23. Mm -hmm. Hey, Coach, can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? about not this week, but the home game. How do you prepare these guys for what they're going to walk into? Uh, to draw on your own experiences? Or what? I mean, this is going to be, this is, everybody knows it's going to blow everybody away. How does it not blow the players away? I think we all know how amazing it's going to be to play in that stadium in front of our fans for the very first time. And it's just, we need to take it in context of uh, we still we want to enjoy it, we want to embrace it, and at the same time we have a job to do. And our job is to go out there and beat sporting on that day. Our, our job is to go out and execute and play by our principles in every single moment. And as a player, as a coach, once that whistle blows, you don't really have to, you know, it's like it's natural. It's what we do all year long. We've played in a lot of different environments in this league, so um, I think we're just going to think of that as being extra special, and I hope that it gives us all that little bit more energy. Um, we're big on en energy around this group, and the more positive mojo we get going, uh, the better, and that's what I want to hopefully see on that day. It, you can always take it as a, you know, it can overwhelm you sometimes, but I don't think that's going to happen. We have too much, many good leaders on this team, some guys that have been in huge moments already in their career, so I'm confident we're going to be prepared for it. Is the ability of getting out on this practice field over this past week, does, does that kind of help ease that transition if there is any? Yeah, it does. I mean, this is wonderful. I mean, you know, step back on the actual grass, but it's, <laughs> it's fantastic. You know, it's where we, whether you're a coach or a staff member or a player, I mean, this is where you want to be. This is your office. And so knowing that these fields are this way and we will hopefully get in that building and be on the grass before we kick off uh, uh, for real in there. I think that literally gives us you know, a great advantage to, to know what we're going into and to, to enjoy our, our new home digs. If you will. So North Texas will be your opponent on the first round of the playoffs depending on what happens the rest of the season. Playing one of these teams so late in the season, so close to the playoffs, do you do anything differently or do you just treat it as a, as a regular game? Well, look, we need to win. So we have to make sure that regardless, we know we're out, you know, goals. We know we're out Klaus at the moment. But uh, that gives us an ability to say, how can we still get a good result? How can we play by our principles? Uh, and then potentially, if we do see him in the playoffs, maybe it will look different. Hey, what, have you, what do you see in North Texas? Any, any uh, difference from the last time? You I mean, they have not lost since we beat them. <laughs> mm -hmm. So they're in really good form. That's the easiest way to say it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they've had a couple PK uh, games go to PKs, but they mm -hmm. haven't lost. So um, I think we're facing a team that's in excellent form, is well coached. They just had one of their players get signed to the first team. Mm -hmm. So it's indicative of them doing a really good job mm -hmm. in their own player development. I mean, FC Dallas is one of the clubs known in this country for player development, and I think you're seeing that. So it sets up for a really important game for both of us, and it's going to be a, a huge battle. Mm -hmm. Well, and the Houston Dynamo Dose coach gets promoted uh, uh, as well. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> so coaching uh, an MLS Next Pro one week and MLS the next. Yeah, so.
Um, everybody else okay? Is Ezra back? Or? Ezra is questionable. Um, mm -hmm. He was back uh, and in training this week earlier, uh, but with a knee injury like that, he had a little inflammation after training yesterday, so mm -hmm. we chose to be conservative with him. Really hoping this is your last road trip? Really hoping this is our last road trip. But we have a lot of work to do. You know, let's mm -hmm. take care of North Texas. Let's give ourselves that ability to play in that building in two consecutive games, and then we take it from there. Is it, in, from the development standpoint, is it good to have so much riding on these? Yeah. Games? I mean, that. Yeah. I mean, it's easy. But the more you have real games that mean something, you know, the easy way. I've said it for a long time. These are meaningful matches. Mm -hmm. These and they can't get more meaningful than to say there's so much on the line. Mm -hmm. um, and once a player goes through that, you know, whether you're Miguel or whether you're, you know, Josh Yarrow, it, guys are taking mm -hmm. it at different times in their career. But mm -hmm. this is excellent for all of them. How are you and Brad dividing up the on-field duties now, since there's so many of the first team guys and getting ready for next year? How's it? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you guys can see a little bit that we're doing exactly that. You know, mm -hmm. we, we we talk about our culture being one that is about everybody. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's we want it to be about our collective, not just about any mm -hmm. one person. So I think Bradley uh, has done an excellent job practicing that in mm -hmm. theory, especially with the team. Mm -hmm. And you see us both sharing in ideas mm -hmm. um, on the training field and off the training field, and that's been great because. Mm -hmm. Just like players, Bradley and I get to develop that relationship, and that's been really important. Hey, Coach. Just, I know we keep asking you about this, but 30 seconds, 60 seconds, define STL City culture. It's one of inclusivity. It's one about that every guy has a role and a responsibility. Uh, there's accountability and responsibility that goes with that, but they know that they have value. They know that they're here to do a job specifically, and it's the job that we all love. So we take great pride in playing and training uh, with a lot of energy, a lot of passion, and then we try to enjoy each other because when you're in these long stretches, you have to do the work. It's a grind, it's a grind and a half. But if you enjoy the people you work with and if you can you know, just have a smile on your face when you see them in the morning or when you're leaving, and in particular when you can be out here like this, uh, it's pretty amazing. When will you have an idea of whether when you'll get to actually practice on that field before? Yeah, the Josh, our, our grounds crew guy, has uh, been great and doing everything he can. His whole crew is working extremely hard, and I think we will be able to get in there. Um, I'm hoping I know that by Monday. After last week, a uh, uh, tough loss. What, what do you what do you take out of last week, and what do you have to do this week against North Dallas and North Texas? Um, well, we've obviously analyzed and reflected the game. We felt like we had most of the time uh, more possession, uh, we're the dominant team, but mm -hmm. um, we didn't have the chance to really get in the last third. Um, and then in the second half, in the beginning, in the first 10 minutes, um, yeah, we were not aggressive enough, gave the opponent a chance, and it was unfortunate that we got a red card then, and then um, obviously didn't manage to, to get a goal and, and lose the game 1 0. Um, but, um, yeah, obviously didn't expect that result, but we're we're used to used to it from bouncing back um, from setbacks like this. Um, yeah, and I think we have a we have a great group of guys, and we're going to bounce back from the loss. What's been the key to bouncing back? Like I said, we have a great great culture here, great group of guys, great stuff. Um, we analyze the game, we we um, are well prepared for the next opponent, and um, yeah, just putting your head down, putting in the work, working hard, recovering. And um, yeah, just believing in our strength. For the guys like you and Celio and others who kind of been kind of like a year-long audition mm -hmm. for you, how has that been to do what you need to do to make your presence felt for you to be back next year with the first team? Yeah, I mean, obviously that's a goal um, for a lot of guys on the team. And um, I mean, it doesn't help to talk about it. You just have to, to perform, <laughs> you know? And um, mm -hmm. I mean, in the end, everything, everything will pay off. Mm -hmm. yeah. You don't have a green card, do you? No. Are you trying to get one? I mean, that's that's a plan, yeah. yeah. That would be yeah. Presumably it would help your situation yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. if you didn't have to yeah. take a foreign. Sure. Yeah. We could adopt you. Sorry? My, wa my wife and I could adopt you. I don't know if my parents would allow that. <laughs> yeah. We'll work on it. I appreciate the effort. Thank you. What originally brought you from 
because you went straight from Germany to to Marshall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Um, I mean, I played in Germany, mm -hmm. and um, I didn't didn't have the chance to um, be a, become a professional there. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, I uh, looked for different opportunities, and I decided to, to play college soccer. And mm -hmm. um, I had uh, different offers. Ended up at Marshall University. Mm -hmm. and, uh, just like here, we had a great group of guys there, mm -hmm. um, a great coach, great staff, and um, mm -hmm. we were really successful. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's that's what helped me to get take the next step here. Then, well, got to be a big difference between Cologne and West Virginia. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. Um, nice, good people. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I miss my hometown for sure, but um, it was it was time for a change, and um, I think everything happens for a reason. And I'm really mm -hmm. thankful for the time in West Virginia. Mm -hmm. um, great people there, um, had great experiences, and um, yeah, I definitely learned a lot through, through that experience. A lot more German being spoken around here um, now with all the internationals? Oh yeah, 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 for sure. Now that, now that more internationals are coming in, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So do you like hang around with, with Berkey or Leuven or these guys as a Yeah, I mean, when, a German? whenever we travel, um, and I mean, it's, it's their start of their new life here in the U.S. and mm -hmm. I've been here for three years and um, yeah, mm -hmm. they, they ask me questions, I'm trying to help wherever I can. Um, but obviously they are established professionals so mm -hmm. um, there's not much I can really mm -hmm. really provide except for maybe the, the life um, outside of the field. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I try to do that and we, we're having a great time. Yeah, well they're established professionals, you're an established American. So, uh, <laughs> no, really. I don't have a green card yet. Right? You don't have a green card, but you've at least had, at least been here for a few yeah. for a few years. Yeah. You guys have you guys have played and, and and practiced in a bunch of different places. Now you've been on on this practice field for the last week. Mm -hmm. um, how how is this kind of compared to the rest of it as you get ready to play in the building? I mean, look around. Um, it's, it's amazing. Um, it's, I mean, at the fuse we had we had great conditions, um, but this is something else. I'm not even really used to this from Germany, um, and I can tell from my own experience that this is absolute world class. And we appreciate it. We come in here every day, um, and we're, we're really trying to to get the maximum out of it. How has it been training with all the first team guys, especially for you training with Lubin? Oh, great. Um, I mean, he's kind of my my position, and um, yeah, I'm trying to, to use every day as a chance to, to learn and grow, um, and uh, really use use those guys as an example. Add stuff to my game that I didn't know was important uh, for my game before, um, but it's it's great to have them. Here. Has it been tough? I mean, you guys that have been here all year, and then these guys come in and like, lose playing time. Um, these guys. Yeah, um, I mean, unfortunately, that's that's uh, that's how it goes, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, but I feel like. Like I said before, we have a great group of guys, and we made it really easy for the new guys to come in. And mm -hmm. like I said, the the guys that came in have have been exceptional. Mm -hmm. uh, their character, um, it's really adding up to a great group, and um, I feel like this transition has been very smoothly. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's great. Do you think you've made a case for being back next year? Yeah. Um, I leave that to the officials. I leave that to the guys that, that make the decision. Um, but I hope so. Yeah. I mean, have you felt good about how you, what you've done, what, what you've been able to do here? Yeah, I mean, obviously in the the, the start of the season, I had a difficult time with my uh, red card and sitting out three games. Um, I mm -hmm. definitely think I've learned from that, and um, since then, I think I, I um, performed on a on a decent level. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I hope that's enough. Mm -hmm. Is there? Pressure? Do you feel pressure this time of year? At the end of the season, the last chance is to make an impression, and also with the playoff situation, is there, is there pressure in these games? Um, I mean, to make an impression, you have that pressure every every weekend, and mm -hmm. I feel like it's it's good to to acknowledge that pressure, but not to think about it too much because in the end, we, we do what we love. You know, we have the we have the chance here to come out here and practice and compete every day, and I don't, I don't really try to think about it too much. Um, I just really try to enjoy the moment, and um, I mean, with the playoffs, it's it's been our goal. You know, we, we try to um, go all the way, and um, mm -hmm. yeah, now now it's crunch time. I don't think there's uh, extra pressure. I think we mm -hmm. we're well prepared for that. Mm -hmm. What's the biggest crowd you've ever played in front of? I mean, probably the NCAA final, maybe the the first opening game here against so six thousand. So this game, you know, we'll get 11,000 yeah, for this that, game here. That's right? exciting. That's great. Um, I can't wait for, for more fans to come. Yeah, playing that great stadium over there.
-hmm. Have you guys been talking about that amongst yourselves at all, or is it all just focusing on one game at a time? Um, I mean, yeah, obviously we talked about it as it, as it uh, has become official that, that we play in that stadium, but right now our full focus is on our Texas um, because we want to put ourselves in the best position possible um, for the game at home then and then really uh, yeah, use the fans to our advantage and get a good result there as well. Does the ability of possibly playing two games uh, here uh, up the ante at all for, for this weekend? Yeah, I mean, we're always fully motivated and we don't go into a game and say, yeah, just because we can play at home, we want to win. You know, we, we always want to win. Uh, but for sure, that's that's an uh, extra benefit waiting for us. So we just got to make sure that, that we use our chance. Now. Fifth straight weekend, you guys are on the road. Have you gotten officially sick of this? Uh, right now? <laughs> I mean, yeah, but yeah, I mean, it's all perspective, you know. I feel like in that moment, you're, you're tired of coming back the fourth time after a travel like this. Mm -hmm. um, but in the end, it's it's what we what we love, you know, and, and it's it's a great chance. It's a blessing that we can travel to those games and do what we love and play play the sport that we love there. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's like I said, it's a perspective thing. Um, if, if you look at it um, in the big picture, there are people, you know, working nine to five <laughs> that, that they don't enjoy, you know, and we get to do what we love. So I don't think it's too bad to to travel to a game four or five mm -hmm. hours.